Okay, here's what I've learned so far, which is very little, but I wanna show you all the things that I've tried. Um, when I get interference is when this cable is wrapped around this cable here. Um, that's when the interference goes up. None of these other wires make any difference what I do with them, including the main power. I have a ground wire hanging out of here. Uh, I was trying to ground all these ferrite rings. I was trying to ground the trolling motor, the transducer, everything. No grounding did anything. I even grounded the trolling motor to my main power. Uh, so all four batteries in the back would be technically sh sharing a ground. Um, that did nothing, no sparks either for the record. Um, no matter where this wire is, close to any of these, doesn't change the interference at all. The only thing that I'm getting interference is when I wrap you know, this cord around uh, the trolling motor following it up. Um, even when I take the transducer off away from the trolling motor, it seems to have no effect. Um, so here's my prop is running. Um, this is what I would call almost no interference, even though on the cell phone it looks like it, there's interference here. When I'm not looking at the phone, it's barely anything at all. Of course, I'd like to have nothing. Uh, what I have found works, um, maybe I'll show you the settings later. Um, if you turn it all the way up to 100, it really doesn't have any interference. But if you drop it down to as little as 90, you, you got the interference starting. So that's not a solution, just a, a result. So I don't know if it's the resistor inside the foot pedal that's causing the radio frequency, the uh, the interference, but uh, that's, that's something of note. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down before I walk into it. Just run it at 30, you can see the interference is back. Um, I've got all these rings running my wire. I've tried different size loops. It doesn't seem to make a difference. I know the, the size is relevant. What's going on here uh, from a scientific thought process from what I found on the internet is you have wires going in both directions, uh, positive and negative. And if they're mismatching magnetic signals that run on each wire, that's where you're getting a signal. So when you're, you're what you're trying to do with these ferrite rings is basically mesh the radio frequencies to where they cancel each other out. Um, so that's why you're, you're looping all your wires to try to mesh them all so you don't have uh, two different frequencies going back and forth, which is what's causing the interference. So uh, even some of these ferrite rings, I've clamped and encircled like the uh, directions that they came with, and it does no difference. Now, this is not the ferrite rings that the professionals are talking about with the, the large ring where you run it through back and forth a bunch of times. I will try that next. Um, what I did find interesting is it is only this section here that seems to be sensitive to coming close to the uh, the, the main cable here. So this is a, a ferrite ring in here as far as I'm aware. Um, it doesn't seem to have much relevance whether, you know, that's next to it or any of these other wires. But when this chunk, this quick connect gets close, that's where I'm getting all my interference. So I'm tempted to, to use this shielding tape that I bought, run it around there and uh, ground it. I'm not sure if that's gonna do anything. I'm not real crazy about getting this all sticky for, for an experiment. I am gonna buy some of the correct ferrite rings that somebody mentioned above um, at 20 bucks a pop when you count delivery. I'm hoping you're not gonna tell me I need four or five of them. That would be a massive pain and, and expense, but uh, that is the only thing that I found to uh, to work here. However, if every time you start up your boat, let's get this wrapped up here, get that interference back. If every time you start up your graph, so our interference is back. Um, if you go into your menu, first things first, you know, double hit menu so you get to this page. Go over to settings, your user mode, you gotta take it off a of custom and go to angler mode. Then you can come back up and go over to your sonar. Did I do that wrong? Oops, you wanna take it off angler mode and put it to custom. Now it allows you to go to your sonar. You can go down here and change your noise filter. This did nothing for me. Three maybe was a little better. But uh, what did work for me, this is, this is dumb, but you change off mega and you put on the 455 kilohertz 
and look at that. I mean, there's no interference there, none. But like I said before, I feel like I'm losing some type of uh, ability when I use a, a less fancy name of 455 kilohertz. So when I go back to the Mega Chirp, it's gone. There's no interference and I still have that. So I guess if every tournament I have to do that at a minimum to get rid of this interference, I'll do it. But I'm sure there's a better way and it doesn't really take that long. Um, so you can always try that to get your interference going. Now, still, you can kind of see some interference here on my phone. When I'm not looking at my phone, I don't see anything. So um, hopefully that helps, but I'll let you know if I found a real solution. Hummingbird, it'd be nice if you fix this yourself since all of this is hummingbird equipment, including a trolling motor. So, all right, guys, if you have anything else to throw at me, let me know.